when I'm teaching beginners or even middle school level students, I like to think of rests as landmines and I don't want my students to step on the landmine. So we got to have to be aware of where these rests are and we got to figure out a way to navigate them so we don't make a mistake. This is important in Star Dancer. It's also important in the sight reading room so that we don't have students playing in the rest. That's a big no-no. Starting in measure three in our violas, cellos, and basses, we have this rhythmic figure where we play on one and four, rest on two and three, and then in the next measure, measure four, we rest on one, and then we play on two, three, four, one, and then we rest again, and that pattern repeats itself. How do we get our students not to play in the rest? How do we get them to not rush and come in early on beat four? Well, we need to get them to internalize the rest. And what I like to do is have my students say rest in the rest. It gives them something to do. So they'll play beat one, they'll play one, and then, then they'll say rest, rest. Then they'll play on beat four, then they'll say rest on beat one, two, three, four, one, rest, rest, four, rest, two, three, four, one, etc. Rest works pretty well. During two quarter rests, you can go play, lift, set, play, lift, play, 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 or something to that effect that gives them some sort of direction to do with their bow. But they need something to do in those rests, you know. If, if this is a festival and, you know, th this is a one-day thing and they're working on this, you're likely to see a lot of kids in the concert just mouthing rest. You know, that kind of stuff. And uh, it's fine. It, and it's definitely better than the alternative. At 11, our violins get a chance to rest and our violas are still resting. How come they don't get a turn to play the melody? And also, how come we don't have notes on beat four here? Our harmonic structure also changes a bit here where we have different voice leading happening. So that, that might be part of a reason why if we duplicated this C major chord again, it might mess this up. I don't know, but it is different. So for here, we have to go one, rest, 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 two, three, four, one. So they, they need to learn this rhythm too, and it's going to be different for the violas here than it was in measure three. So they have to be aware of that. And also because of it, you can't rehearse these harmonies at the same time as effectively. You might get violins playing in the rest otherwise, and the violas are just going to be all kinds of confused. Now, you can practice this melodic material together if you like, if you want to work on pitch that way. We've got some rest here at 19, but they're not too bad. Make sure your first violins don't rest too early. I like to have them play all the way to beat three and then come in on beat four. But here in measure 21, this can be a little tricky because we have ties over the, the bar line. So you have this dotted half note and then quarter note tied to a half note and then three, accent on three, four. It's just in second violins and violas and we have a similar rhythm here in 2930. However, they're different notes. So we have to be careful we're playing different notes, but the same rhythms. So how do I like to teach this? Well, what I like to do is I kind of like to teach this like common core math, you know, break things down into the simplest components and then start grouping like things together until we have our final answer. So I guess this is my cross-curricular approach to teaching rhythm. But here we go. We got these dotted half notes. I'm going to break all of this up into quarter notes. I'm just going to go down, up, down, up, and I'm going to break this too. Down, up, down, up. The difference is I'm going to put the accents where we need to because the accents are where we change bows. So I'm going to go accent, two, three, accent, one, two, accent, four. And that gets the students to have to figure out where these are, and it also starts to get them to internalize the beat. Okay. Once they good at, get good at that, then what we can do is we can start tying some of these quarter notes together. So I'll play half note and then quarter note, half note and then quarter note. So we'll go down, two, up, down, down, up, down, up. 
So now we're, we're just tying one thing instead of three things together. But the accents are now on the down bows. So every time you down bow, it's an accent. So down, two, up, down, down, up, down, up, right? And then once they get at that, we can tie on another. So it's going to be down, two, three, up, 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 down, up. I like that progression. It tends to work well with beginners. It t tends to work well with middle schoolers and Ten, they tend to learn the rhythm a lot faster that way. You can have them count out loud. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That might work. You can get them to draw the, the beats above the notes. So one, two, three above the dotted half note. And then four above the, the quarter note. And then one, two above that next half note. And then three, four above the next two quarter notes. That'll get them thinking. But you're likely to need some kind of strategy for this. Um, students, especially beginners, they haven't seen a whole lot of dotted rhythms at this point. So you might have to teach them, you know, maybe you might even have to teach them what a dotted half note is. So be careful there and, and make sure that they understand the rhythm. Okay, 29, 30, same thing, same process, just E's instead of D's. Okay, when the A section comes back, there's a little bit of variation. In 43, we have a dynamic level change and then we have pizzicato in our upper strings now lower strings are still arco and and that's a good thing because they're probably going to help keep the fort down as far as the beat goes um, and then this pizzicato can 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 rush but at least these guys are probably going to hold on and eventually hopefully these guys will come back you know when they get into this arco stuff and but, you know, I've, I've, I have heard some almost falling apart, just barely hanging on, and then 49, 50, usually get them back together there. But um, so, so 43, again, we need to make sure that we're using real pizzicato technique, which means that we're going to grab the string, pull the string, and release the string, three-step process. So we're going to release, grab, pull, release, 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 and make sure that we're doing all three steps each time so that we don't rush, we don't play in the rests, and we don't come in early. The pizzicato section's only 11 pizzicato notes, but you still have to work on it. In fact, you'll probably work on that more than anything else. So spend a lot of time at 43, making sure everybody's got good rhythm and everybody understands the process. Listen to your cellos and bass players. Make sure that you're with them. If the wheels start to come off the bus, 49 and 50 are a good place to regroup, but you're going to have to get them back in sometimes. So I highly recommend that you use your passive conducting and that you only conduct beats one and three. In 49 and 50, you want to conduct beat one, beat three, beat one, beat three, instead of going one, two, three, four, because they don't have to watch you. And if you're giving them extra information that they don't really need, then they don't, they don't have to follow you. They're likely to ignore you and just focus on what they're doing. But I'll make a deal with you, okay? If you use active conducting for everything, um, even when there's no active music, you know, you can do that. That's fine. I'm good with it. Just be consistent, which means right here in measure 54, I'm going to make you conduct beat four, even though there's a rest. So if you want to go one and two and three, four, and then the piece is over, then that's on you. But 49 and 50, we've got these half notes, and then we've got a lot of places where we can cue. So we've got 49, we've got half note, half note, half note half note, then you can cue your cellos and bass players in, you can cue your violas in, you can cue your second violins in, you can cue your first violins, okay, that's what we got. Cello bass, viola, second violin, first violin, you get everybody in and give your left hand a job to do in those spots. I want to talk about accents a little bit. We do have some accents in Star Dancer. We've got five of them in the last measure. We've got accents these cadence points here throughout the piece and we've also got accents here 21 22 29 30 what are we going to do about these accents 
Are they going to be louder? Are we going to have extra grip, extra weight? How are we going to play those differently to differentiate between accented notes from non-accented notes? For me, one of the clues comes from, from 19. We drop down a dynamic level, and so we're piano. And we play through this, and then we have accents in 21, accent in 22. Um, are we going to play those accents forte, or are we going to keep those accents within the piano section? Now, in, in the second statement of it, when we go up a step at 27, the dynamic level increases again. We're up to, uh, we're up to forte, and then we still have these accents 29, 30. So what are we going to do now? Play even louder on those? So for me, just playing louder is not going to suffice because you know, we can do that just fine in the, in the piano section, but we're, we're going to do the exact same thing in, in, the, in the forte section. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't really seem to work. So to me, we, we're going to have to do something different, and I think what we're going to have to do for that is to add more weight. So adding more weight is going to be different than increasing, increasing the dynamic. You know, It's an accent, not forte to fortissimo or piano to mezzo piano, whatever. Uh, but we're, we're just going to lean a little bit more into those notes and make those notes different from all of the other notes around them. And I know I'm getting pretty analytical for, for, for star dancer, you know, especially since I don't even know what star dancer means. But I know what it doesn't mean. <laughs>